Hello, this is my iPod third generation. I'm recording this video because I wanted to share the knowledge I've gained when I replaced the internal hard drive with a compact flash card. I found a lot of advice online, including videos on YouTube showing how it's done, but they always get a bit vague when it comes to choosing the right flash memory card and how to prepare the card so it will work with the iPod and sync with iTunes. As a result of all that, it's taken me a lot of trial and error to get this working. In this video, I want to show you exactly how I'm doing it step by step so that hopefully you will have less missteps, less trials and error than I've done. So let's get into it. Of course, the first thing I did was to replace the battery and that's, that's the old battery there. And here's the old hard drive that I took out. So I just want you to see those. This is a 10 gigabyte iPod so the original smallest one you could get. This is the first compact flash card that I tried in the iPod and got this working. It's a SanDisk Ultra 2 from, I bought this in 2006. Uh, although one gigabyte's capacity, that's less capacity than the original 10 gigabyte uh, <laughs> in the original iPod. So it was a useful proof of concept, but that was all. So I then bought this 64 gigabyte card from the same manufacturer, SanDisk. And although it's a lot newer and a lot faster, being 120 megabytes per second compared to the 9 megabytes per second for the old 1 gigabyte card. But I only have partial success with this card. I can get it to boot up and I can sync some music onto it, but when I try and sync it to a second or third time, it gets stuck like this. I then went back to the YouTube videos and found one person who actually showed on screen the card that they'd used successfully in their third generation iPod. So I took this screenshot and used an online image search to find where I could buy one. And here it is. I found the 16 gigabyte version first, which I installed and it worked perfectly. So now I've got the 32 gigabyte version and I'm going to use that to demonstrate to you how I can swap that in and format it and get it syncing up with iTunes. So the other thing we're going to need is a Firewire to a dock connector cable. This is one I got from eBay because my original one was worn out. Um, and you need this to power up the iPod, not for data, but for powering it up. And this is the original power brick that I had from my original iPod. So I didn't need to buy a replacement one of those. Lucky, lucky me. So the first step is to take off the back cover. I like to use a couple of guitar plectrums for this. Now, once you've released the retaining clips on both sides, take great care to open it sideways like it's a book so you don't break off the headphone connector like I did the first time I tried this. And I had to buy a replacement. <laughs> don't do that. Open it very carefully like a book. So these are the two good compact flash cards. You can see they're the same blue and white design, whereas the one on the right is a slightly different colour blue and it's got a bit more bleeding into the text there from the blue into the white compared to this one where it's a bit clearer yeah, a bit clearer on that one and then the other side you can see 2003 memory technology company Inc interesting, exactly the same part number even though they're different sizes yeah, there you go, those are the two memory cards so let's fit this one, the 32 gig so here it goes, we just slide it into the IDE adapter and a little bit of set tape over there to hold it in place. Now let me just show you how that all sits together. Actually, let me just pull out the IDE adapter so you can see. There you go. There's the IDE adapter with the compact flash card. And that's all the things that you need. You need both these things to replace the hard drive that was in there before. I'll just pop that back in to the connector. You can see it just, just pushes in like that. You have to take care not to dislodge the cable connector which is behind there where it plugs into the board. And then we can just close it back together and get ready to format the, the new memory card. Now if we switch on the iPod, it tries to boot up and then we expect to see a broken folder symbol which means it can't find the folders and files it's expecting to find on the internal flash memory card. So now it's ready for me to plug it into the computer. So let's do that. So, here's the computer that I'm going to use. It's a MacBook 
from about 2005 and I have a USB to dock connector cable here which is connected USB end into the computer and the dock connector is going to go into the bottom of the iPod um, yeah this MacBook Air, uh, so this MacBook is running macOS 10.6.8 Snow Leopard so it's the latest version of macOS that this device officially supports 2 GHz processor yep that's that and then if I show you the iTunes version that this is running iTunes version is there we go 11.4 that's the latest version that runs on this version of Mac OS so let's plug the dock connector into the iPod so yeah we just plug it in like this a little bit fiddly without the case being fully together and then we just wait for it to show up with that there you go do not disconnect so that's ready to go and and then the software is ready as well so we press continue and then we press get started right we can see 29.81 gigabytes free on a 32 gigabyte card so now I just need to do restore iPod to format the card just a quick read through of the warning message and then restore and update now after this point nothing happened at all it just hung there and I realized I've made a mistake I should uncheck the manually manage music and enable disk use checkboxes and then press apply what you then need to do is press the restore iPod button that's what definitely what you should do accidentally I pressed update and that went wrong and I'll show you what happened next So when it came to then restarting the iPod so that it could perform the update you press the two fingers like that, wait for it to boot up and then you're waiting for a dock connector to appear but instead I got the broken folder symbol so I knew at this point that I needed to repeat the process, plug it into the Mac and do it again so I plugged the iPod back into the MacBook using the USB cable and then the error message popped up saying that we've got a corrupted iPod and you can see here that you can't enable disable the disk mode within iTunes anymore so I switched over to disk utility where I could see that it was appearing as a disk therefore all I needed to do here in disk utility was to unmount the disks switch back to iTunes and then this time definitely press restore iPod rather than update there we go this bit took a while so I've sped it up a bit and then here we have the confirmation message your iPod has been restored to factory settings please unplug your iPod and connect it to the external power supply to complete the restore process so let's do that Right, so the first thing we need to do is to take the, the dock connector out of the bottom of the iPod. It's very important that you do that first. Trial and error <laughs> taught me the exact order to do these steps. Now you might notice that on the screen of the iPod it still says OK to disconnect. The iPod still thinks it's connected to something via a cable. So what we need to do now is to force a restart. And the way that we do that is by putting two fingers on these two buttons here. Just hold them there. And wait for it to restart. Once the screen glows blank you release your fingers and wait for the Apple logo to go away and then fingers crossed hopefully you get yes the dock icon appearing on the screen this means it's ready. So now we just plug in our firewire power brick to dock connector into the bottom of the iPod and wait then we're very happy to see this progress bar 
which shows that the card formatting is taking place. And then we wait for the iPod to reboot. Hopefully we'll get to see the language selector screen. Yes, there we go. Perfect. So I'm going to select English as my language. I'm going to have a look in the settings just to check about zero songs and 29.7 gigabytes of storage. Good, I'm happy with that. Let's put the case back together and put some music on. So then we plug it back into the computer using the USB to dock connector cable and you hopefully iTunes will then recognise it and we'll be able to follow our normal process of putting music onto the iPod. Lovely. Now I've noticed that once again uh, enable disk use is checked so we just uncheck that and well, there's no point waiting waiting for it to be applied. I have to hit the apply button first. So let's do that. And then the iPod is accessible and we can check out the music on there. Let's have a quick look. Go to music. Let's have a look in the albums. Uh, what have we got? Oh, there's Let's, Let's Dance. Let's play that. Oh, yeah. Here we go. So I've just synced it up with my iMac, which is a little bit running a little bit newer uh, Mac OS, but look at that, 2,457 songs on there now, and 11.5 gigabytes free. So I've got room now to load some more music onto my iMac, so that I can then load it onto my lovely working iPod. Super duper. Happy with that. Thank you for watching. I hope this was useful.